What is going on, everybody? Uh, we have talked a ton about all the good juju with Wisconsin Badgers football right now, but I wanted to talk about what could maybe go wrong next year. How are we? What's going to happen if we don't reach those expectations? I think it's a fair discussion to have. We haven't talked about it much, uh, so I definitely want to get into it, and I definitely want to get y'all's take in the comments. Where do you think if this team falls short, uh, where do you? What do you think the reason will be? I've got a couple. Uh, we're going to get into it next on Lockdown Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, your team every single day. I really do appreciate y'all tuning in, as always, for everyone listening, whether you're on the podcast, on YouTube, um, appreciate y'all so, so much. Um, we're going live with this one, but first, today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, like I said, we, we're going live with this one because originally I was just going to record it and release it tomorrow, but I, I kind of feel like I want you all's take uh, on why you think this season may not live up to expectations. And I'm not here to be a Debbie Downer or, or to any type of clickbaity stuff. Um, I think there's legitimately we've gone we've had so many great stories and so much good news and so much positivity injected into this program. I think it's fair to just take a step back uh, because things don't always work exactly like you think they will. They don't always work as quickly as you think they will. Why next year or this upcoming season? What are, give me some reasons? I have a couple as well. Give me some reasons you think this team will not hit the expectations that we're starting to develop um, under. Phil, uh, Luke, uh, Luke Fickle and Phil Longo. And I want to be very clear. I don't think there's really any realistic scenario next year's team like tanks or it's terrible or it's a disaster. But what if you, if we, if we win seven or eight games next year, why are we a little below that nine, 10 um, kind of projection we're starting to get? So that's what today's show is. Let me know um, in the comments, what you think, what are your legitimate concerns with this team right now? And um, we'll get into it all. Uh, Darren Wyman, happy birthday, by the way, Ryan. Darren, thank you. I appreciate it. I had a, I had a great 40. I had a, I had a really great 4-0. Um, the misses spoiled me, and it was a lot of fun. And my 49ers won their playoff game. So uh, thank you, Darren. I appreciate that. All right, let's get into some of the concerns. I want to start with false concerns. Um, these are some concerns people have thrown out there that I think are just foolish nonsense. The first one is that Luke Fickle is Scott Frost part due. That's ridiculous. That is, you can just take that one and flush it. We don't need to spend any more than 20 seconds on it. Um, Luke Fickle has a better resume. He's more established. He is a really good football coach. He's been to the playoffs. He knows how to build a recruiting department. He is not Scott Frost. That's just a nonsense, silly, ignorant um, comparison. So flush that one. Uh, the other one that we see a lot from opposing fan bases or even some within this team is the weather. How is Phil Longo and his air raid system going to play in the weather? Listen, throw that one away too. That's another silly, that's a boorish um, argument or boorish concern that people are coming up with. It's it's a lazy. People in the NFL throw the ball in the winter. Other teams in the Big Ten throw the ball. They're located in wintry, cold areas as well. And how often do you really have a crazy snowstorm? Like It's just not that common. And when it does, guess what? The other team's not going to be able to throw either. And Phil Longo is not an idiot. He, he wants to run the ball as well. Throw that concern away. All right, let me get into my first concern. And then I'm going to start getting some of y'all's. The first one, I already see some of you um, in the comments section parroting what I'm about to say. Um, I, I have a, I really don't think people are, are fully, no, I, I shouldn't say that. People, I think, are aware of how wholesale the changes here are. But change is difficult. And change can take a while sometimes. And this is a enormous full-scale top to bottom change right and completely new coaching staff no holdovers bunch of new players coming in um a completely new offensive staff that is night and our offensive system that is night and day from what we had a tweaked defensive system these are all incredibly big changes any one of which would be um a, a cause for concern but you're doing them all in one off season and coaches coming in that have to get used to, to playing new opponents in the big 10 going up against new coaching staffs. They don't have years of playing against P.J. Fleck in Minnesota and Ryan Day in Ohio State and Ferenc in Iowa. You know, so although I don't think you need years to game plan for what I was going to do. But the point is change can take a while. And 
I think this will get better as the season progresses. But I, I think early in the year, you're going to see some false start stuff, some illegal shift stuff, some quarterbacks throwing to uh, spots that you know, he thinks receiver's going to be and the receiver's not there. Remember, it's a brand new quarterback's room and a brand new receiver's room, right? There's going to be miscommunication at times there. And it's it's going to happen. Like, so I think people are maybe glossing over that a little too much. I think that's a real thing. I, I'm not saying it's going to set up for a seven. But for the record, by the way, before we even get any further, I think we win 10 games next year. Like, I think next year's a, a big time success. But I think there's reasons why it might not be. And I think it's a fair discussion. And it's, I think you need to have these discussions sometimes to to really uh, see both sides of the coin here and not get too swept away on the optimism current. So I think there's going to be a learning curve. I think there's going to be um, some growing pains at times. That early game against Washington State when they go on the road with a completely new staff and new players and new quarterback, I'm telling you all, you could lose that game. We could absolutely lose that game and it wouldn't be stunning. Washington State's not a bad team. I think we win it, but – Something like that, because of a growing pain, you know, next year, the receivers are going to be better in this system. So I think that's definitely a concern there. And I, I see some of that in here as well. You know, uh, Brian Shetty mentions, I have the expectations of improvement, um, you know, completely new staff. Pedro mentions lack of synergy within the offense. A lot of new pieces and a new system could not mesh as we expect them to. Yeah, I think that's a perfect way to put it, Pedro. A lack of synergy within the offense, right? It's, again, it's, some of these players that we are counting on to have big roles next year, right? You're talking about Chimre DK, Tanner Bordellini, you know, Clay Cundiff. A lot of these returning players have been in one type of college system their entire life. And some of them never played going back to their high school days in an air raid system. Like everything changes. And especially for the more experienced players, it might not be as simple as like, like in a video game, if you change your playbook, there's no learning curve for the players. You just switch it over and you're fine. That's not how this works. So expect some growing pains. Be shocked if there's not some growing pains. And it's possible that some of those growing pains may come up in a, a big moment or in a critical spot on the road. It could it could cost you a game. Um, so that wouldn't be stunning to me at all. Let's go. A um, couple more comments here. This one is a similar one above Kurt Col Colax. I'm sorry, man. I'm terrible with last names. He says the offensive line does not gel. You know, if again, I think that ties into the wholesale changes, but you also have an offensive line last year that didn't play up to, up to, in my opinion, up to par. So there's certainly a possibility that an offensive line that didn't play up to par last year is welcoming in two new additions in the transfer portal. If they don't gel and figure it out with a new offensive line coach, again, you, it's this theme of just there's so much change that players have to adapt to and that coaches have to adapt to. It's entirely possible that it takes longer for that to set in. Uh, than we are are thinking or it takes longer for that to set in than we're maybe given credence to. Uh, let's keep going with a few more comments here, and then we're going to take a quick break. Carson Merton, uh, lack of running back depth. One injury could really hurt. Yeah, that's well said, Carson. And we talked about it. It surprised me, especially with the the bevy of, of players they brought in in the portal that they didn't bring in a veteran running back. That really surprised me. Now, I think that speaks to two things. I think it speaks to the fact that running back is not – as as vital in this system and this offense as it used to be like they're still gonna run the ball listen phil longo is still gonna run the ball i'll say it one more time because there's badger fans that are still worried about this phil longo is still gonna run the ball but we're not gonna run it as much as we used to so there's gonna be less wear and tear on the running backs i think that factors in here and i think the other thing that i, I mentioned this with punter right if you don't see them bringing in a punter it's probably because they're pretty satisfied with gavin meyer if they don't bring in a running back i'm telling you it's because one of the guys behind Chez and Braylon, I'm telling you it's because they believe in him, whether that's Julius Davis, whether it's moving Jackson Aker over, or whether that's Cade Yacomelli, maybe it's Nate White, the incoming freshman. So I do think, Carson, to your point, I'm concerned about running back depth as well. I think them not bringing in a guy tells you that they're not concerned, and they certainly would know that room better than I would. So uh, it is a valid point, though. All right, coming up, we're going to get to the the rest of your comments, I want to get why you think this season won't live up to expectations. I've got another one I want to talk about coming up, and then we're going to get more of your comments, talk about Greg Gard a little bit, because I think there's a really interesting discussion on him that's starting to brew. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn, um, and we definitely want to take a second and talk about them. LinkedIn, as a small business owner uh, or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. 
That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills and experience to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data and find the right person to put in front of you. It's win-win. Nobody's wasting their time interviewing for jobs they shouldn't interview, and you're not wasting your time interviewing people who shouldn't be in the door. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job applications on one platform, and it's why small businesses continue to rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. They are building a dynasty. And here's the important part. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Tune in to Lockdown Badgers, making this one of your first listens. When you're done here, go check out Lockdown College Basketball, all the latest college basketball news in one spot, like only the Lockdown Network can provide. All right, let's keep going with this. Uh, a lot of comments to get to, a lot of thoughts to get to. Let's let's start with some of the comments and thoughts first. Um, Don, Donnie House Hayes says, why should we settle for anything other than these expectations? No, I, I, I agree with you, Donnie. I don't want to – I have big expectations as well, but I do think it's – it's a good discussion just to see kind of, hey, if we don't hit those expectations, why why might the reasons or what, what would be the underlying cause, right? And those discussions kind of take you into different spots of the roster and different things that maybe um, the staff still needs to do or to shore up. So uh, B Valterra, by the way, thank you, B. You've been on a lot of these shows. My concern is the D-line, maybe mainly the middle. Yes, 100%. And let me take that comment there because that's going to bring me into my next spot of concern. I think there's a few depth areas. So Brandon, I think your first name is Brandon. I apologize, but if it's not uh, talking about the nose guard, I think that's a big potential issue. We don't know if that's, that's solved and there's going to be games. You're playing Iowa, you're playing Minnesota teams are going to test that middle. We know that. And last year, last four years, we've had Keanu Benton as just kind of that anchor there. I don't know if Paez and Neil are, are ready for this. Um, someone did mention Isaiah Mullins moving to the middle potentially. I think that's a great thought. So maybe you go three deep there. But, yeah, I think nose guard's an issue potentially. I think running back depth is an issue. I think cornerback depth could be an issue if the younger players don't step up. That's the other one, right? You have Alexander Smith. And then who else do you have at the cornerback spot that you really feel good about right now? Like, I'll pause. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. I, I've talked about Avion Jones as a guy whose upside I like a lot. I like some of the new kids coming in, you know, DeCluna and Amari Snowden, um, Jace Arnold in that group. But there's not a lot of proven there's not a lot of proven quality there, right? And you're we are going to be in a conference where we're going to be matching up with uh, Ohio State, right? Who's going to go four four across, five across, and really test your corners? Yeah, the corners could be an issue. I 100% agree. Um, there, we had a couple comments in here about corners. And then the other thing, and I want to throw this out there and get to your comments then. The other thing that I think could cause some issues, I don't expect it to be a big deal because I trust Luke Fickle to have a handle on this, but you're bringing in 13 transfers, right? You are completely overhauling multiple positions. Is it possible the locker room gets a little weird, right? Competition is great, but chemistry is king. And again, I trust Luke Fickle. I think he has a handle on this, but again, you're, you're upsetting the, the, the balance. You're upsetting the um, natural order of this team quite a bit, um, especially at receiver, in the secondary, at quarterback. Even at offensive line, there's two guys coming in that, that might be starters potentially. You know, what happens to those players that have been in the system for two or three years and just got jumped? You know, uh, listen, I, I think what they did is good. I think you have to bring in competition. I think you have to upgrade the, the talent. But there is a – possibility right there is a potential that there's some locker room issues because of it um i don't think that's a huge thing but i want to throw it out there as it's a possibility it's certainly a possibility and locker room issues can can derail a team right now again i i really don't want to harp on that much because i i don't think luke fickle i i should say this luke fickle definitely understands that right his coaching staff understands that and there's there are leaders on this team so i don't foresee it being an issue but it's definitely something to throw out there all right, let's keep going here. Um, Darren Wyman says, with this team, the floor is nine wins. My gut says 10 and two with a loss to Ohio State and one other slip up. That's definitely possible. I, I think 10 wins is my projection, by the way. So I'm still on the high end. I think this conversation is just fun to have. You know, what could go wrong, essentially? Uh, Silver86 says it's the pass rush. It wasn't great outside her being and losing the big men in the middle. That's a great point. Um, thank you for the comment. 
you're losing your two best pass rushers, Nick Herbig, Keanu Benson. And who are we replacing them with? We brought in two transfers, neither of which was as good as either of those players last year. So it's going to have to be a lot of internal development. It's going to have to be scheme. And I don't know who you would point to right now on the roster. Like point to the guy you think on the roster that is your best pass rusher, right? You don't have, my, my point is you don't have an obvious guy. You know, we were hoping Gerald Peterson would take a bigger step up this year. Um, Witt hasn't been able to get healthy. Um, Bowlers didn't really take a big step last year. The defense alignment, Rodas Johnson uh, and James Tom Thompson haven't really developed as pass rushers. So yeah, pass rush could be a real big deal last year. And then if you couple it with the, my, my previous concern about a lack of established depth at cornerback, you could have some issues stopping the pass. So I think that's a very valid concern. appreciate it. Uh, Dave Johns, uh, love Dave, uh, com fellow Cumberland kid. Uh, as much as we all love Jim Leonard, Luke Fickle is the truth. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I made a comment on Twitter that there's this, this alternate universe, right? And I'm a com I like, I love the Marvel films. I love the, the multiverse idea. There's this Badgers multiverse out there somewhere where Jim Leonard got the job. Um, they, they removed the interim tag. He hired, you know, a, a flashy offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis. And we'd be all really excited with that. I would love to have seen how that would play out, but I am incredibly happy with Luke Fickle. Dave is dead on with that one. Let's see. Um, a couple more here. Zach Ramsey, uh, not going to lie, Purdue going to be a little scary with Hudson Card going there. That's another one, too. You know, there's some quarterback talent that Wisconsin's going to play now. Obviously, McNamara went to um, K um, went to um, Iowa. You know, they're upgrading Purdue. Um, got Hudson Card. That's a really good transfer. Indiana just landed a four-star quarterback. You know, not that we play Indiana, but there are some quarterbacks on the roster or in the schedule that are going to potentially cause some issues for Wisconsin. Obviously, Ohio State's going to be loaded. So a couple of those, again, talking about pass rush, talking about secondary as both being potential concerns. Now you're also going to be facing some real quarterbacks. Yeah, that that is definitely the more we talk about it. And this is why I wanted to do this live chat. Some of the stuff I hadn't even really talked about. I didn't even think about Hudson Card at Purdue when I was doing the show. Now you have good quarterbacks going up against what we're kind of talking about are our, our, our biggest concerns, right? Pass rush, cornerbacks. It could be interesting. It, that's all I'm saying is it could be really interesting. Uh, Dave Johns comes back with, we just have to remember not to overreact and explode the second things don't go perfectly. Sports fans have a hard, hard time with that. Yes, <laughs> I do. Right. We all do. That's why we have the therapy shows after every game where this so week we create a space where we can overreact and overreact and just kind of get it out. Um, there's going to be growing pains. I said it in segment one. There's absolutely going to be growing pains. And we can't freak out when those growing pains happen. Because right now, I feel like there's a segment of Badgers fandom that think Luke Fickle is going to win a national title next year. I mean, I know that's hyperbole, but we are so excited and stoked for what is going on here. There's still going to be bumps in the road. And maybe that was the, the premise of this show. Like, it's there's still going to be some issues. There's still things to figure out. There's still some depth problems on this team in places. And there is going to be um, growing pains. So definitely think that's going to happen. Regular Duck says, what up, Ryan? I think there's big expectations on Mordecai. He's going to throw for a billion <laughs> uh, throw for a billion yards next year. That would set all sorts of record books. And, um, yeah, I, I would be here for that. I think Mordecai's going to have a big year. I think he's got incredible weapons at this point. He's going to be able to run the ball. Defense aren't going to load up. He's going to have a monster year, 100%. Monty D, who's been in a lot of our shows, appreciate it, Monty. I think our problems will be on defense and giving up the big play by run or pass. Yeah, I, I think that big play by pass could really hurt this team. Uh, I don't know what the secondary is going to look like. I think the time to get this team will be early, right? I think it's going to gel. It's going to get better and better. This is one of those teams where as the season goes on and the players get more and more experience in the system and the younger players and the transfer players continue to grow together, this team is going to get better and better and sharper and sharper. That's why I said that early Washington State game on the road. That's the time to get the Badgers next year. Uh, I, I'm concerned about that one. I really am. Let's see, keep going here. A bunch more comments. Uh, Kyle Matre also says, will, will we be able to rush the passer? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, I don't know. Steve Mitchell's, I, and I just talked to this as well. Steve beat me to it, actually. So, Steve, great point. We should definitely improve as the year goes on, getting used to new systems. Um, I agree. I 100% agree. Let's see. Let's keep going here. Uh, David Wagner put some expectations up here. Uh, 3,000 yard passer, two 1,000 yard receivers, and a 15 yard, 1,500 yard rusher. I think that's all fair. In fact, I think Mordecai could throw for 3,500 yards next year. I really do. And I think, I don't know about 2,000 yard receivers. I think that's going to be pretty spread out. I think there's a lot of weapons in that system, 
but it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, Pete Weisberg, are we ever going to talk about basketball? I'm, I'm done with that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yes. Um, we are going to talk about basketball some in the next segment. I definitely want to get in on, on Greg Gard, and there's some things there that people have started to bring up. I think it's a really interesting discussion. Uh, again, Monty said a uh, big play on defense. Here's a great one that we haven't talked about. Brian Fouch says, what if Mordecai goes down? That's another spot where there, there's not a veteran behind him, I, unless you count Chase Wolf. You know, if Mordecai goes down, I think Locke is probably going to emerge as the number two. And then you're really riding with um, a brand new quarterback, an inexperienced quarterback. So that would be interesting to me. Um, Zach Ramsey said Evers would come in. I, I bet you it's Locke. I, I have no idea. I think he's more ready. Uh, he just, I think he's more ready. I think he's a little more polished. I think he has a lower floor or a higher floor, but a lower upside. I think down the road, it's probably Evers, but I think next year it's, it's Braden Locke that comes in. Uh, Preston Brodsner said we get Indiana next year. Oh, I, that's my bad. So yeah, you are playing that, that four-star quarterback. They just got as well. Um, again, I think that secondary and that pass rush could be real issues potentially next year, at least in terms of our expectations. Again, all this is relative to who we are and what we're expecting. I don't think they'll be bad by any stretch, but you don't have a Nick Herbig probably next year. And I don't think you have a lot of experience at cornerback to really point to and say, I think we can line up three corners across and shut down a really good passing team. And that's kind of where we're going with this. Um, do North Badger 715 says growing pains in our secondary against tougher competition, D line talent and depth. Yeah. I think that's a lot of, a lot of the concern here is defensive line, pass rush, secondary depth. Uh, tight end is an interesting position You know where we, we have a lot of players that haven't been able to stay healthy. I think that's a potential one as well. All right, let's 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 take a quick break. I want to talk about friends of our show. Like coming up next, I want to get into some more of your comments. I have some saved from the YouTube side, including a really kind of growing, interesting thought on Greg Gard. I want to talk about that specifically next to get your thoughts on that. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Live casino games, blackjack, roulette, plus a place to do your futures betting, your live in-game betting. And again, I've got money on the Niners to win the Super Bowl. I've talked about it, but not that long ago, that seemed like a silly thought when Garoppolo got hurt. And now it, that might pay out for me. I'm pretty excited about it. Of course, I also have money on the Suns winning the finals, and every player they have is injured. So, you know, say la vie. Anyway. Uh, Bet Online has you covered with all of your props, all of your lines. It's the number one place to go. There's a reason we go there. It is the industry standard. Grab your mobile device, head to the website today, Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's keep this going. I, I have some comments from the YouTube comment section I want to get into. I want to start here and then kick it over to the, the live chat to see where y'all are at. Um, let's talk about Gray Guard. And I have this comment from. DN and he said amazing as amazing as this recruiting and portal commits have been it is really a gut punch for how poor the process was on our PC and before it makes you wonder if there was something more the basketball team should be doing and I had to crop this comment because it's too long but that last part is one I want to zone in on it makes you wonder if there's something more the basketball team should be doing right it, it's easy to see the success that Luke Fickle is having and the talent they're bringing in, the way they're using the portal. And then you go and look at Greg Gard. And this is where this gets interesting. We're going to have a whole show on this because this is a fascinating discussion to me. Greg Gard won the Big Ten last year, right? Uh, he's been very, very successful. He's won a lot of his games. Paul Christ also won a lot of his games and was very, very successful, right? So we're starting to see this talk about should Greg Gard be held to a higher standard? I don't want to say fired because he shouldn't be, <laughs> you know, like Greg Gard shouldn't be, but this is also a team bereft of depth. This is a team that has trouble adapting. Uh, I think he kind of coaches in one style. I don't think he, I think there's some warts with Greg Gard and it's very interesting to me to have seen Chris, uh, you know, McIntosh act so decisively on the football side. And you wonder if some of this is either going to rub off or spill over to the basketball side. So I, I'm definitely interested in your thoughts on Greg Gard, um, where he's at. Because, again, I don't want to go to where people are going in terms of Greg Gard should be on the hot seat. But nobody thought Paul Chris coming into this year was on the hot seat, right? And there are some weird parallels here. Both coaches, I think, are a little stubborn. Talking about Chris and Gard, both coaches probably don't embrace the recruiting and transfer portal really as much as they should, right? Now, I like next year's basketball class a lot, though. This is where this gets kind of complex with guard. 
Next year, you got Nolan Winter, Gus Yaldin, Blackwell. Like, next year's class is really good. But the last several classes preceding that haven't been great. You know, Connor Asijin coming in. But there's been a lot of misses. And those misses directly point to the lack of depth on this team. You know, there's a reason why Tyler Wall gets hurt and we're, like, suddenly not competitive. You need somebody off the bench who isn't Tyler Wall. That's not realistic. But you need somebody who can come in and be 80% of Tyler Wall. And there's just – it's a black hole right now. So – it's very, very interesting um, with Greg Gard. Let's see here. Uh, Greg Gard, this is from Do North 715. Greg Gard is a fantastic coach. He gets the most out of what he has, but is short on talent and depth. If Gard is not a great coach, his team is well below 500. This is the crux of it, right? I think Greg Gard is a good coach. I think he's really, really good at developing players. Um, he gets the most out of what he has, but he's short on talent and depth. That's the problem. He's in charge of building talent and depth, right? So he's kind of failing at that part of his job. And I think that's, that might be harsh, but I, it's also kind of accurate, right? Like he, he has failed at building depth on this team. I think that's a fair statement. And we always try to be real on this show. We try to be authentic. Like that's a problem. Now. I also think when we talk about it, a fantastic coach, I think he's fantastic in certain elements. I wish he was a little bit more adaptable. I wish he was a little bit more flexible. Um, the, the, the idea of, I, I've talked about this before. I hate that he never plays zone, right? I think that's a sign of stubbornness. I really do. And people used to talk about how you can't play zone against some teams. You can't do this. I see NBA teams play zone, right? You can play zone and you, you can still be a man-to-man -man team and you have a zone defense or some type of gimmicky defense in your back pocket for when you want to steal a possession or two. And quite frankly, last year's team, last year's team with Tyler Wall, with Davis, with uh, Davison, uh, that would have been a great zone team in stretches. It would have been a great zone team. Brad Davidson is a defensive IQ genius. He would have thrived in a zone. Uh, I don't know. It, that element of great guard frustrates me. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, free throws. Yeah. Pete Weisberg. I, I don't know what's going on there. I don't think that's a guard thing, though. Um, that that That's some, some player accountability, some inability. I guess maybe, you, again, you pointed back to recruiting talent, right? Recruiting shooters, but... I, I don't think that's a guard thing. I don't know what's going on with that one. Um, let's see. Ben Albin says, it seems so hard for Badgers basketball to score sometimes. I said, it, I said it at the beginning of the year. This team is going to go through stretches where they don't score. And the reason is they don't have anybody that can get to the rim consistently. And again, that goes back to recruiting, right? It goes, that's a big part of Grey Guard's job that he hasn't maximized. Um, a lot of the other areas he's really good at. But they have nobody that can consistently get to the rim. And that's a problem. Like Chucky Hepburn is a really good player. He struggles to get to the rim. Um, another issue here from Murph, in-state recruiting has been horrendous. It continues to be that way. So much in-state talent leaves the state. Now, it's basketball recruiting is a little weird and wonky with AAU, right? It's there's there's a dirty, murky side to this, but like that's also Gray Guard's job as well. Now he has the Minnesota pipeline which has quite frankly saved this program. Um, and there's been some really good gets. Obviously Davis came in and, you know, but it's, it's very interesting with guard where this is going to go. Um, I, again, I don't think he's on the hot seat. I don't think he should be on the hot seat. I want to be very clear on that, but I think there's very obvious areas where his stubbornness hurts Wisconsin. And I think there's very obvious areas where the recruiting and the lack of action in the transfer portal hurts Wisconsin. You know, Max Klesman getting the getting Max Klesman was a big deal. But they also needed an athletic wing and they needed front court depth. And you didn't get either of those like that. That matters. Right. Um, people will point to Jacoby Neath being out as the reason this team doesn't have depth. Jacoby Neath, that can't be the reason you don't have enough depth on the team. Like he wasn't a big time player to begin with. Uh, it hurts, obviously. But yeah, I, I think a lot of the, the depth issues point right, right back to great guard. And I want to do a whole show on this, actually. So. It's, anyway, it's interesting to me. Um, I think we're going to wrap up about there. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Oh, well, let's, let's finish on this one, actually. Pedro says, I think also think we're behind when it comes to player development. Players have gotten better in some instances, but they typically just improve on the skills they came in with instead of learning new ones. I don't know. I think I disagree a little bit on that, Pedro. Um, but you could be onto something. I, I, I love the, the comment. I think... I think he's typically done a pretty good job, him and his staff, of developing big men for sure. You know, I, Stephen Crowell's got a lot bigger. He's gotten better in the post. 
Um, yeah, I think I think he does a pretty good job of player development, but I, I don't think you're completely off base either. Um, appreciate everybody tuning into the show. We have more coming out tomorrow um, on Wisconsin. Let's keep it going. And again, let me know again in the comments, where else do you think this team might let us down this year on the football side? Uh, I think it's an interesting thought, even though I don't think it'll happen. Anyway, on Wisconsin, appreciate y'all, and we'll talk tomorrow.